Okay, here we're going to talk about one of the prereq um, topics. So remember, those prereq topics are kind of spread out throughout the whole course. Um, it's not uh, designed in a matter that you'll see all the prereqs first before you start chapter R. The way they design it is these are kind of like just in time topics. So these will happen as you're working on stuff. And you'll notice that this is a prereq if you do not see that little um, badge. I forgot what it looked like. Let me see, let me, give me one second. Okay, it looked like a little diamond, kind of like the Superman symbol without the S in it. So when you see this, that means a gold topic. The only time you won't see that symbol when you bring down the drop down with all the topics in there. Um, the only time you won't see that is if it's a prereq topic, okay? And this one will be um, needing you to complete in order for you to move on with the chapter one material, okay? So we're gonna solve equations zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. So these are basically linear equations where something funny happens at the very end. And you usually don't see that funny thing happen until you get to step four. So we're going to go through all of our steps and then we'll see what that funny thing looks like and the three different situations on what can happen in that step four. Okay. So for step one, you're going to eliminate fractions, which we have none here. Step two, you're going to eliminate parentheses and we do have that in this case. So we get 3u plus 6 plus u equal to 4u minus 4 plus 9. Then step 3 is to combine like terms. So on the left, I have 3u plus u, which is 4u, plus 6 comes down. On the right-hand side, I have negative 4 plus 9, which gives me positive 5. Here's where the crazy thing could or could not happen. So step four is to move all your variables to one side. So I like to move my variables to the left, so I'm going to get rid of this term. So that means I need to minus 4u on both sides. And it cancels here, leaving me with just five, but then it also cancels on the right-hand side, leaving me with just positive six. This is the weird thing. Um, you don't need to move on to step five, but if you think about step five, let's just leave him as a ghost for right now, okay? If I were to try to move on to step six, it would be to divide by the coefficient. Coefficients are the number in front of the variable. And if you notice, we don't have any variables here. So you wouldn't be able to finish the process with step six at all, okay? So what this means is that your conclusion has already been you just have to decipher what it is. So the fact that I have no variables left only gives me one of two options. Either the answer is no solution, so this equation can never um, be solved, or the answer is infinitely many solutions. And basically what that means is that that equation is always, this side is always equal to this side no matter what. Okay, and no solution means the left hand side could never possibly equal the right hand side, no matter what u is, or x, or y, or z, or variable. So, how do you decipher whether the answer is this or this when the uh, variables completely wipe out on both sides? That is, whether the statement is a false statement. or whether it is a true statement. And so then let's look here, because this is the statement. Is six equal to five? It is not equal to five, which means this is this case, no solution. So my answer here would just be no solution. And in Alex, you can um, just select the option that says no solution. Now let's go ahead and work out a couple more to see what happens. 
So again, step one, no fraction. Step two, let's eliminate the parentheses. We get 5y plus 5 minus y, 3y minus 3 plus 7. Step three, combine like terms. So we've got these two. And these two. Then step four, move the variables over. So I have 1y plus 5 equal to 4. So here, step 4, um, nothing happened. I can't keep continuing. So step 5 is to move the constants to the other side. The variables did not wipe out in this particular case. And then step 6, divide by your coefficient. I end up with negative 1 as the answer. So this is what they call a conditional solution. It means that this equation is only true under one condition, and that condition is that y is equivalent to negative 1. Okay? Whereas here, there's no solution at all. Here, there is one, but it's very specific. And then the other one is um, when you have infinitely many solutions. Okay? So that's probably what this one, what's going to happen here, but let's check it out. So again, no fractions. Let's do the parentheses. So we get 4v plus 4 minus 7. 3. Oh, I have two different variables here. It should be y, not v. So 4y. And then 3y minus 3. Let's combine like terms on both sides. So we have 4y minus 3. And here we have... 4y minus 3. When we go to step 4 to move the variables over, we have to minus 4y on both sides. That happens to wipe out the variables on the right, but it also happens to wipe out the variables on the left. And so there's no reason to continue when that happens. That's the part where you need to start analyzing what you have. Okay, so once you move the variables to one side, you have one of two things that are going to happen. Either the variables are going to completely wipe out, and then you have to decide which of these two to answer, or there's going to be variables left, and you have to continue through step five and six. Here, my variables canceled out, but I do have a true statement because negative three does in fact equal negative three. So then that means here my answer would be infinitely many solutions. That means it doesn't matter what x value I plug or what y value I plug in here and what y value I plug in there. As long as I'm plugging in the same y value everywhere, it will come out to be equal. The left side will equal the right side, no matter what y you plug in. 